Hi, today we'll be looking at both the schema and code first approaches to build an GraphQL schema. This is a very popular topic and rightly so. There are many advantages and disadvantages to using both. And today we'll quickly have a look at both implementations of this so you can make your mind up when you are figuring out how to get started with GraphQL. When GraphQL and the JavaScript reference implementation GraphQL.js were first introduced, building schemas with code by composing classes, important functions was the norm. We'd write some code and it would output a executable schema without having to manually write anything such as a SDL. If we scroll down and have a look at the example here that defines a GraphQL schema, we can see that we import some things from GraphQL. Then we define our schema and we specify a new query object type by calling GraphQL object type, then we give it a name, then we specify all of the different fields on our query. We can see here that we have the field hello, and inside of here, we specify the type and the resolver together inside of this GraphQL object type. And for a long time, this was the way that people went about to create their GraphQL schemas. Then along came something called GraphQL tools. This allowed us to use the SDL approach to generate a schema. Then we would write our resolvers and then we would call make executable schema to make it all work together. Let's have a look at what this actually means. We can see here that we have some type definitions inside of a string. We specify the type author. Then we have the ID of the non-nullable type int then we have first name, last name, and we have a inline description here. Then we have post, which is a relation to another type. And we have this type below here inside of this string. Then further on down, we have our type query. Then we have our type mutation that includes all of the different mutations. If we scroll down, we can see that we have here all of the different resolvers. We have the query and we have the post and author queries that return all of our posts. And for the author, we have an argument here that uses the function find to find from our array of different authors where the ID matches. Then once we have all of that, we can import make executable schema from GraphQL tools and we can pass both our type definitions and our resolvers to make a executable schema. GraphQL tools became very popular and still today it remains one of the ways that people go about creating their GraphQL schemas because it's very easy. It's very easy to create a schema that looks like this. To me, this is very visual. It's very easy to see what's going on. But as your schema and your project grow, you can imagine that these type definitions are going to grow exponentially. And this is where many people look to use tools such as GraphQL modules, where they can bring all of their different type definitions and resolvers from other files and folders together and merge them as one type definition string as well as becoming difficult to manage as your application grows. We can also see here that we have a JavaScript object for a resolver map. This means we've got no type safety when working with our resolvers to get the type of the arguments that are passed to our queries, mutations, subscriptions, and more. We also don't know what the end result should look like for our resolver. Now, there are many ways to solve this, and one of them is to use the GraphQL code generator. I covered in episode 26 how you can use the TypeScript Resolvers plugin to automatically generate from your SDL the different types that you need to map to your resolvers. So we can see here that we have some schema code that generates on demand. And we can see here that to our resolvers, we can pass the resolver map and then everything inside of here would be type safe. Now you may be thinking problem solved, but this is something else that you need to install within your project and work with and maintain as your application grows. And this can often be a little bit too much when starting out. So many people may prefer to go with the code first approach where it looks a little something like this, where we define the schema and the resolver all in one. Now you're probably already thinking at this point, well, this isn't really type safe. We're just using JavaScript. There are many code first GraphQL schema libraries that we can use to generate that schema and get full type safety out of the box without having to install anything additional. Let's have a look at a hello world example. We can see here that we import a schema builder. We then define the query type and all of the fields. And we can see here by using all of the different functions of this library that this gives us full end to end type safety. For the query hello, we have the arguments where we have the name and we specify here that it is of the type string. We then know what the type of name is because we defined it here. And we didn't have to configure anything additionally. This type safety just works out of the box with GraphQL code first libraries. There are many other things to use in code first libraries that we can use, such as sharing the behavior of things like pagination. 
If you're working with the relay spec and you want to implement how pagination works, you can generate a function that you can share in code amongst all of your different query types. And you can imagine with SDL, we'll need to retype all of that every single time we want something to be paginated inside of our string. So there we have it. If you're getting started with GraphQL today and you choose to go with the code first approach and at least have some understanding of how the SDL first approach works and what tools are required to build this. And this is because the SDL first approach appears to be in most examples that you're going to see in the real world with all of the different tools and frameworks that are available. We'll explore many code first projects, libraries, frameworks, and tools in many other future videos. So stay tuned for those.